Hey guys! So in this video, we will be reviewing what is recursion and its applications in Java by looking at some examples of how we can use recursions to solve various problems. First, let's understand what recursion is. Recursion in Java is when a function calls itself directly or indirectly continuously. A method in Java that calls itself is called a recursive method. The idea is to represent our problems in terms of one or more smaller problems and add one or more base conditions that stop the recursion. There are two main components that are required for every recursive function. First is the base cage, which returns a value without making any subsequent recursive calls. Second is the reduction step, which is a central part of a recursive function. It relates the value of the function at one or more input values to the value of the function at another input value. In this program that I created, we're going to implement a class of recursive function for factorials. Our base case in this scenario is 1. It is a special value that can be evaluated without any recursion, since 1 factorial is itself still only 1. Our reduction step allows us to reduce our input by a value of 1, which gets us closer to our base case, and we multiply that result by our original input. Here's an example of how the code would run. Here's a diagram to help us better track the recursive steps of our program. First, we input a value such as 5. Our recursive function tests it against our base case of 1. 5 does not equal 1, and so our recursive function returns 5 times recursion factorial of 5 minus 1. Now our program goes back and calls our function, but now with an input of 4. 4 is still not 1, and so it repeats the process of reducing the input by 1, and this time multiplying it by 4. We keep doing this until our input has finally reached 1. Now when we test it against our base case, n does equal 1, and so we can finally return 1. But now what? Well, remember that recursion factorial of 1 is the same thing as recursion factorial of 2 minus 1, since the input for both functions is essentially just 1. When we look at our previous step, we notice that we returned 2 times the recursion factorial of 2 minus 1 which would basically be 2 times 1, which is again just 2. Now that we have this value, we can go back to step 3 and realize that we have the result for the recursion factorial of 3 minus 1, which when multiplied by our 3 goes back into the value of 6. This tracing back of our steps is known as going back up in our stack, with the stack referring to the computer's memory, where temporary variables such as the values of our integer n are stored, which are created by these recursive and other functions that we have used in our program. Until finally we reach the recursional factorial of 5, where our final product of 120 is derived. Now some common errors dealing with recursion can be seen when we have issues with our base case. If the base case is not reached or not defined, then the stack overflow problem may arise, which refers to a condition where the program tries to use more memory than what is available. For example, if we changed our base case from 1 to 100, we would now get a stack overflow error. Note that both recursive and iterative programs have the same problem-solving powers, in that every recursive program can be written iteratively and vice versa. Here is an example of how we would do the same program for a factorial using an iterative function. Note first the difference in the amount of lines that were required to write the second program. While it may seem like three more lines are negligible when doing something like a factorial method, the difference adds up when doing more complex and recursive dependent problems that are easier to do when you have mastered recursion and no longer have to rely on such iterative functions. Here we still have a base case of sorts. As we go through our while loop, we are multiplying our input by its 1 minus that value, saving that product into an integer called factorial, which gets multiplied by the next reduced value of the input. We continue to go through our while loop until our final value of n finally equals 1. Once this occurs, we get kicked out of the loop, and finally we can return our factorial. The drawbacks of recursive programs in comparison to iterative ones is that they have greater space requirements than iterative programs, as all functions will remain in the stack until the base case is reached. 
It also has greater time requirements because of the time it takes to go through all the function calls and returns step by step. However, recursion provides a clean and compact way to write code, which is much more simplified, as seen by the substantial difference in the amount of lines it took to get the same result for an iterative versus recursive program. I hope this video helped you to learn more about recursion and its applications in Java.